Hey everybody, welcome to Off the Rack, I'm Sal. I'm Tiffany. This is the comic book review show where we take a book from last week and then break it down by its basic elements of art, writing, and story and give you our thoughts about it. That's right. And then we wrap up the show with some recommendations for books that are coming out this week on Wednesday that you should go pick up, according to us. Today we're going to talk about The Flash, number 22, written by Joshua Williamson, with art by Howard Porter. This is The Button Finale, part four of The Button. It's it's done. It's over. Yeah. Moving on. We gotta yeah. just keep moving forward, no as button. The Flash would do. Yeah. So, uh, initial thoughts on Flash, number 22. Tiffany? Um, you know, it, 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 um, I, you know, it, I don't know. It did a lot, but it didn't do a lot. You see, that's my opinion as well about yeah. the button overall. Yeah, I want to yeah. get, there's some long lasting ramifications of the button and some implications about what this event was. And I want to address those, but I thought we'd talk specifically about the comic right yes. off the bat. Yeah, let's and do that. And then we'll get into the specifics, the nitty gritty of what it means. Totally. So with this, as a Flash issue, it was obviously more Flash dominated. Yes. Uh, we got all our Batman stuff out of the way in the last issue. Uh, and it also, of course, debuts an old school character that everybody's kind right? of a big fan of. Yeah. Jay Garrick returns. If you're not familiar or if you weren't expecting it, I mean, I don't know why. They were putting him everywhere. But Jay Garrick comes back. That's, the, that's basically the... the the end result of this issue if you're a Flash fan. Right. Well, he, he doesn't really... He comes back, but doesn't stay. No, he doesn't stay. And uh, there's lots of reasons why I'm sure, but uh, I won't get into them here. Okay. Uh, initially, I just... I thought it was a fun issue. Yes. I thought it was fine. Uh, it was a decent wrap-up. Mm -hmm. uh, it had two very different tones. One being the tone of the ending of the issue, mm -hmm. and then, like, an epilogue that was much more different tone. So, what do you think of the art for this issue? Howard Porter on art. I think he's a regular uh, Flash artist. Yeah, you know, like, I think... I think his work really works for the Flash mm. because he's, he's a lot more loose. Um, he tends to do things a little more in a dynamic sense. Um, that said, you know when you go from the Bat Book to this, it's kind of jarring. Yes, you know. But if you're a long reading Flash fan, you're probably used to this by now. Um, so you know, it, it it was fine. Right. It was fine. Uh, his pencils don't speak to me. Uh, I think this cover was the best piece of art that came out of the issue. Mm. Uh, otherwise, I'm not a huge fan of Howard Porter's art, but I'm not saying that it's bad by any means. It's just not for me. I think I've talked about this before on previous Flash issues. Yeah. Where I'm like, Howard Porter's art, I'm not a fan, but it doesn't mean that it's bad or that I don't understand why people like, like, like what he does. Right. I thought he did a good job rendering um, the effect on Eobard. Yeah. Like in his last moments. Right. That well, was cool. His, for now, last moments. Exactly. Because, because once you enter time travel into the mix and you have characters who could time travel, it's never the end. No. No. Nothing ever ends. Today. Yes. It's true. What do you think of Josh Williamson's writing? Uh, he does a good job. Um, I mean, I've always liked his writing, so I think like he's a very competent storyteller. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like, this book really did a good job of like, answering some questions, raising all new ones, um, and, and Williamson did a fine dance around a lot of things. Yes. Um, I thought it was a little funny for me, at least. If you're a fan of this channel, you know that Sal and Ethan are huge Fugitive fans. So, of course, when Jay Garrick is like, they took everything, everything from, from me. me. Oh, Jesus. That's all I could think of. Yes. <laughs> so... You know, I don't think that's something Williamson was doing intentionally. That's just something a character He wanted a big say. emotional moment. Exactly. But for me, all I could think of was, you know, Provasic. Yes. <laughs> Devlin McGregor. Devlin McGregor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Joshua Williamson does a really nice job of tricking you into thinking he's just a regular comic book writer. Because he's written some epic, grandiose, mm -hmm. beautiful stuff. And then sometimes he'll just write a flash book. Yeah. And it's just about folk running fast. Yep. And uh, so he'll he'll he's disarming, and I think that this issue was was fine. You know, it wasn't epic or wasn't you, you know it didn't uh, it didn't tug at my heartstrings or anything like that. Right, but right. But it wasn't you know it did a fine job. Yeah, yeah. In particular, um, you know, it's funny. It's like the Batman scene, like that really like stood out to me. Mm. And again, it's just because it was a very quiet scene, and I think that um, for a writer to be able to hand over the emotional control to the artist I think speaks very highly of the writer oh, I have agree. that kind of trust and faith he's incredibly consistent yeah and like that is so important mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so, consistency is key with when it comes to regular serialized fiction yeah yeah uh, so okay let's get into some of the more grandiose ideas obviously we get some confirmation finally 
Dr. Manhattan is behind DC Rebirth. Like, the uh, thing that everybody saw coming, but wasn't it fun? Yes, to, to go on this journey. Yeah, to theorize, to wonder, to, to ask questions. Because the fact is, while they did allude to it, while there were some overt references to it, you know, nobody said Dr. Manhattan's here. They didn't, you know, they, they, they made sure to wash out the blue hand in every yep. scene that it appeared in so that it could be anything. Right. Uh, but obviously now it is just, it is just Dr. It's Manhattan. It's just him. Which is fine. Yes. And I'm on board for that, despite my non-interest in, you know, post-Watchmen fiction, like before Watchmen. Right, right. Uh, but I, I think it's cool, and I'm glad that it was finally confirmed. Right, and I think DC's clever, I gotta mm. tell you. They're very clever over there. Because, you know, this has been going on for a while now. Yeah, over a year. Um, and so they've given us this. It's something we've, we as a, a community have been incredibly interested in. Whether or not they were interested in it in the first place yeah. quite as much, the community became enthralled with the idea of the button. And so they've given us, you know, here's some conclusion on that, or some finality on that. Right. However, I feel like the bigger question is, who is Mr. Oz? Right. And that one, they will not tell us anything about. Nope. And I think that is just so clever that they made you feel like, okay, cool. Like, all right, like, now I got a little something else. Something else we all kind of already knew. Yes. For me, it's kind of interesting because the button doesn't do anything, right? At the right. end of the day, it doesn't actually accomplish much. Batman finds the button at the end of DC Rebirth. In this, the button is taken away from them and no questions are answered. Mm -hmm. You know, Batman and the Flash go on a merry adventure through time and meet a doomed timeline for about 10 seconds. Right. And Eobard Thawne dies, is resurrected, and dies again. Right. And he, well, he's not resurrected. Well, they, I mean, we just we just yeah. see time in different ways. But the fact is, Eobard Thawne has returned to the mortal coil and then shuffled loose from right. it. And so at the end of the day, like, the only thing that happens is Batman loses the butt. I mean, I don't feel like it, it was something where they didn't care. No, I don't think they didn't or... care. But... It's a funny thing because I'm talking about event fatigue, right? No, Everyone talks true. about being suffering from event fatigue. We're all tired of these big event. No, people are not tired of big I comic book moments, right? And like that's what this was. That's I think that's the the key here is that this was a moment. This wasn't an event. No, because honestly, rebirth is the event, yeah. and it's still going on. Well, it's also kind of like the publishing label, you know? Like rebirth is the is not it's it's transcended status quo, yeah, and it's become like. DC Comics might as well change their name to DC Rebirth. Right. That's how intrinsically tied it is with the overall publishing approach. No, it's true. It's true. But, like, for me, the button is more... It's almost like it's like a little snack or like an appetizer. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's also... Um, whether or not... Because I'm not over there. I don't know what editorial's doing. No, I have no idea. But it's... Almost like they, there's something they put in there. They put it in there, right? Batman picks it up. They knew they had to address it at some exactly. point. Exactly. But I, I'm wondering if they intended to address it on such a grand scope, or because of the fact that the community like lit up with it. They were like, Oh, we should we, we should dedicate a whole thing to right, it, right? Because like in a single issue, we may not have felt satisfied. Yeah, that's fair. I feel fairly satisfied about the exploration of the button, regardless of its ending. See, for me, I don't feel satisfied at all about x because I don't think they even explored the button at all. The only thing we got was off-panel Batman says, I checked it out and it, and it seems to be just a regular piece of, like, right. piece of button, and I don't know where the blood comes from. And I, he doesn't know anything about it. And then, at the end of the day, it's taken away. That's it. Well, how about this? I felt like, with it being taken away, that was their way of saying, there's nothing more for Batman and Flash to learn about this. Right. But then why even introduce them to it? And I guess it's so that we can introduce doubt in Batman's dedication to the mission. I think they introduced them to it to solidify in everyone's minds that the Watchmen were involved. Right. Like, there's no way that you can't deny that it happened. Like, the, the yeah. Watchmen is going to be a big player well, in what's happening. Here's the thing. Happening. Like, Dr. Manhattan being a huge, not huge, but he can be huge, um, yeah. but a blue guy right. is fairly iconic. The button is far more iconic. Yeah, than a to... blue hand coming out of the ether. Yeah, yes, I agree. Yes, so I feel like in in terms of that, like it was a, it was a good idea to do. Yeah, I thought the epilogue was kind of interesting. I agree. I loved the epilogue, and that was just a just re re showing you the di or the dialogue between Doctor Manhattan and Laurie when they're on Mars, mm -hmm. and about time, mm -hmm. and uh, Doctor Manhattan picking up the button and kind of like just just. 
And then we don't know what he does with it, but he but he keeps it. Exactly. Oh, and then the, the button goes reverses through time, and the blood like removes it from it. That's or what, that's what it looks that's like. That's what like that's what you said. That I thought it was going back in time. For me, I thought it had to do with gravity. Right, that the that the blood was just being lifted off. Her. Right, the sheer fact that their conversation is about time, and it was Batman and Flash going on this adventure. Mm -hmm. I mean, perhaps in the end we'll find that this was more tied to this whole thing than we ever knew. Yeah. Because Flash and A.O. Barthon are time traveling characters, along with Jay Garrick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that could be of complete fascination to Doctor Manhattan. Yeah. Speculation time. I think that the button is going back in time. I think okay. that Manhattan's playing with time. I think that the conversation with him and Lori that's being echoed in this issue is a just and the fact that flash and aobard and batman all go back in time i think it's all about time so we can roll things back so that eventually when we do get the watchman universe involved in this everyone's alive you think they can bring rorschach into the, yes. into the dc universe yes i do that's a disaster <laughs> here's the thing Rorschach's already in the DC universe, no, and his name is The Question. The Question is not as bad as Rorschach. Oh no, The Question's like a crackpot. Yeah. The, like, the, Rorschach is a lunatic. The Question would look at Rorschach and be like, I'm done. You are going too far. I'm done. I'm not yeah. doing this anymore. And since there's only two of us on the couch today, we're just going to give you our recommendations books that come out this week on Wednesday that you can go check out that we think are cool. Uh, I just want to do a quick apology. Last week I only mentioned like one or two books. There were a bunch of books that came out last week that I love and wanted to see. Uh, Super Sons came out last week, so if you've missed it for whatever reason, go back, get it, because it wrapped up the Super Sons arc, and it's just fantastic. And this week, I recommend you should pick up Action Comics number 980 from Dan Jurgens and Patrick Zercher. Uh, this one, by the way, is a majestic Zod uh, butt shot on the cover. So if you like TNA, but you also like dudes, then this cover is for you. Okay. you get some serious Kryptonian man-ass in this issue. I'm gonna get that. Yeah, right? Check it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, get that. Superman Revenge Squad is looking to recruit Zod, and uh, as you might know from Ben's recommendation of uh, Suicide Squad from a week or so ago, uh, the Suicide Squad is looking to recruit Zod, and so uh, there's going to be some... So they're going to have a reality show where Zod has to pick between two different teams to see who he'll join at the end. Yeah. Awesome. I don't think that's what it is. But uh, you are going to see Superman versus the Revenge Squad versus Suicide Squad all trying to get slash stop Zod. And that sounds like fun. So check that <laughs> out. What about you? What indie book are you doing? I don't actually really... I mean, like, uh, it depends. Is Valiant Indie? Uh-huh. Is it? Sometimes. Sometimes it is. I don't know. I gotta tell you, there was some stuff from Indie that was coming out that I was really interested, like Underwinter. Um, but I know it's not for everybody, so I wasn't gonna recommend it on a whole. Fair enough. Um, and while Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supremes is out, I haven't been keeping up with that because that's not my main title. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm reading it. I'm Fair enough. Well, I'm you not. gave it some time. Where the hell is Doctor Strange? Yeah. Well, he's not in the Secret Empire, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But he will be. Eventually. Um, but, so I turned to Valiant, and while I don't read a whole lot of Valiant, what I have read of Valiant has been more of the supernatural side of it, including Dr. Mirage. So I was excited to see a book called Rapture coming out, oh. which is gonna have people like Shadow Man and Ninjack in it, and dealing with some supernatural elements, like defeating an Elder God. And the cover has Ninjack kicking skeletons. Oh, cool. So, like, immediately, yeah, I'm, down. I'm into that. Um, I, it seems like it might be a little ridiculous and over the top, which is kind of up my alley. Every once in a while, I need something like that. Totally. And even if it's not, it turns out to be totally awesome. Yay for me! Um, it's written by Matt Kent with art by Cafu. Ooh. I don't know who, I don't that, know is. who that is either. I don't either. Intriguing. Um, but Matt Kent, I know he knows the Valiant universe pretty well. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of interested to see where this is going to go. And again, supernatural. Totally. Kicking skeletons. Right. What you can't go wrong. That's right. You How literally can, can't go wrong. How can you refuse? With like a essentially a ninja fighting skeletons, skeletons. with like Shadow his Man feet. there. Yeah, with his feet. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah, there I'm you go. I'm totally in. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for watching everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode of Off the Rack. I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. Thanks for watching. Keep reading. Bye. Bye.